It was a wonderful Tuesday afternoon. The October foliage stained the trees with deep reds and bright yellows. And I had a physics test. So the teacher hands me the test and I look down, and I'm like, hmm, there's something wrong here. I'm not in fourth grade, I'm a senior in high school. Why is my test in Comic Sans? I don't know if this would bother anyone else, but it really bothered me. It made me feel like this class wasn't hard enough, that I had to further apply myself. So I thought I would take a break from being the best Mario Kart Wii player to ever live, and become a rocket scientist. So here we go. Do the physics behind the Bowser Castle Wii shortcut make sense? Well, if you look right here, no, because monkeys can't ride bikes. But all jokes aside, let's get down to business. So here's the equation we're looking to solve. D equals negative M over 2K times the lin of T minus MG minus KV squared over T minus MG. So what the heck does that mean? First off, we need to know what each one of these variables represents. D is the distance from point A to B. M is the mass of the subject, which in this case is Mario on his bike. K is the wind resistance. T is the thrust. G is the force of gravity. And V is the maximum velocity. Let's start with the mass. Now you would think for a guy who's been a medical practitioner, an all-around sports star, and a master of parkour, that there would be a definitive height and weight for him somewhere on the World Wide Web. Well, the only source that I found that gave me a definitive number led me to a website to buy a sauna. I'm, actu I'm actually not kidding, it, it, it led me to a website for spas and saunas. So, I decided to think outside the box. How did I do this? Well, I booted up my Super Smash Bros. Brawl Disc, which was made by not only Nintendo, but Pokemon. Now the good thing about Pokemon is all of their character- characters? Species. Species. All of their species have a height and a weight classified in the Pokédex. Now according to the Pokédex, the average Charizard is 5 foot 7, or 1.7 meters tall. So by comparing him to Mario, and setting up a simple proportion, I was able to determine that Mario is about 1.33 meters tall, or 56.4 inches. But that's not really important, because what we need to find is Mario's mass, or weight. Now if you take a good look at Mario, it can kinda say he has a little bit of a gut. I wouldn't say he's obese, but I wouldn't say that he's in tip-top physical form. I, I don't know how he can jump so high and all this parkour stuff, but anyway. Using a standard body fat chart, I'd say that he's about 133 pounds, or about 60 kilograms. But what about his bike? Well, there's absolutely no chance that I'm really gonna be able to find the weight of the Mack bike. So what I did was, I found a bike that was similarly built. The Honda VFR 1200F, which is 591 pounds. By using the size of the Honda bike, and the proportion of Mario's size to his bikes, I was able to come to the conclusion that the Mach bike is approximately 450 pounds, or 204 kilograms. Which means that M, the mass of our subject, is 264 kilograms. Now for the force of gravity. As some of you might know, the force of gravity when dropping an object near the surface of the Earth is 9.81 meters per second squared. However, since in some prior Nintendo games such as Paper Mario, Bowser's Castle hasn't always been on the ground, I thought it would be safer to calculate the g-force myself. So as you can see here, I'm falling into the lava in 0.85 seconds. Now by using the size of Mario to calculate the brick size, I was able to figure out that Mario is actually falling 165 inches, or 4.2 meters, during this time. This is significant because when those numbers are plugged into the equation, the g-force isn't 9.81 meters per second squared, but actually about 11.6 meters per second squared, which is a very big difference. The maximum velocity and the distance were both made a lot easier thanks to the speedometer hack, because as you can see here, we actually know how fast we're going. So the maximum velocity is 100 kilometers per hour, or 27.77777777. Seven 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 meters per second. The distance is a little bit more complicated, but still not too difficult. 
for this, we're going to use the formula d equals vit plus one half at squared, where d is the distance, in this case, the distance of y. vi is the initial velocity, which is 100 kilometers per hour, or 27.777777. Seven meters per second times the time which we can see here is 0.915 seconds plus one half times the acceleration due to gravity which we know is 11.6242 meters per second squared times the time squared this comes out to give us a dy or the height of y of about 20.55 meters which if compared to the size of mario and the time spent propelling his way from the bottom to the top makes a lot of sense and then finally, there's k, which is the wind resistance. Now this is the most complicated variable, seeing as it factors in things like drag, and a bunch of other complicated terms that I don't really understand at all, because I'm only in Regents Physics, which is, like, baby physics. Our, our tests are in Comic Sense, that's, that's how you know it's pretty easy. But anyway, I consulted the AP Physics C teacher, and he told me in this case K would probably equal about 3.35. So let's go with that. So now we can plug in our numbers and find T, which comes out to be 9,442 newtons. And I have no idea what that means, because I got that question wrong. Because I thought a Newton was someone who studied physics and that I would weigh the same amount as him because I studied physics too. But apparently he was a golf ball, not a scientist. Fig Newton might weigh as much as a golf ball. Or an apple. Apple probably makes more sense. Anyway, we can use the Newton value to find the horsepower of the motorcycle using the equation P equals the force in pounds times the velocity in feet per minute over 33,000. With all the conversions done, that gives us about 334 horsepower. Seeing as the most powerful racing motorcycles have horsepower values around 200, this seems a bit far off. And by a bit, I mean a bat. And bats have long wingspans, so it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty far off. And it would seem as if this is not actually physically possible. Right? Wrong. This is the horsepower for the entire trip. To find the horsepower for the motorcycle, we have to factor in the boost pad, which actually propelled us up through the ceiling. What I found was that under the optimal conditions, the boost pad can actually generate over 28,000 newtons of force. Of course, while doing the glitch, we weren't accelerating from zero all the way to the maximum speed. We were already at a high speed. So the boost pad didn't generate as much force in our equation, however, it's still a significant amount. If I slow down the clip of me doing the glitch, you can see that the boost pad actually accelerates us at almost 24 meters per second squared. And if we use the force formula, mass times acceleration, in the context of this problem, the amount of force generated by the boost pad is over 6300 newtons. By taking that amount of force out of our original value, we get 3,126 newtons. And if we plug that into the horsepower equation, we get about 116 and a half horsepower, which just happens to be the average horsepower for a standard motorcycle. So all the physics in this glitch actually do make sense, right? At least according to me. Wrong, because boost pads don't exist in real life. But motorcycles do. So it half makes sense. Or maybe not half, but it partially does. By the way, I got a 92 on that test. I must be really dumb. Just just thought I thought I'd throw that out there. Yeah. Okay.